Hey guys, Brian here. Uh, today's video is going to be a deeper dive into my Linux CNC configuration. And I want to preface this video with this isn't going to be a tutorial of how to set up Linux CNC. Uh, I just want to go over the changes I've made in a much deeper uh, depth than I did in a video I made about two months ago. Um, that video was kind of just a uh, uh, a taste of what Linux CNC would look like on the print NC but I've done a lot of changes I've had a lot of help along the way and I just want to kind of go over the the changes that I've done and uh, kind of go over in a lot more detail of the configuration that I have set up here so without wasting any more time we will go ahead and jump into the uh, uh, configuration here so like I said this isn't gonna be a full-blown tutorial um, I want to just kind of go over some of the things that I did here to get it to work for my machine. So I'll, there's a shortcut that will be placed on your desktop. I think it's one of the options in the configuration uh, setup. You can just hit launch print NC and then this is going to be your your uh, home menu basically. Or, you know, it, it opens up here and when you first set up Linux CNC it won't look exactly like this one of the things I've added is this probe screen here and then I've also added the uh, the VFD information on the right here and uh, I just want to kind of show you guys the kind of I guess default uh, layout for Linux CNC here so now that we have a quick glance at the main menu there let's go ahead and close out and go to our folder so now this is our folder, our configuration folder that the wizard made for us. So I am going to upload this to the wiki and I'll share my uh, configuration with everyone. It may not be exactly what will apply to your machine, but it'll at least be a, a pretty good start, I imagine. Uh, so I'll have that linked in the description below. So there's a lot here in these folders and when you, when you do your setup, it won't look exactly like this. So we'll start with our HAL, our HAL file. So we'll open printnc.hal. And it's going to look like a lot of text. And it might be a little intimidating at first, but you'll get familiar with it. So um, I don't know what exactly every line of code in here does, but I kind of just know enough of like what to modify to get it to do what I want it to do. So the first uh, handful of lines uh, they're just kind of general. Uh, I'm not going to go through every line of code because like I said, I don't know what every command means. Uh, I'll be impressed if someone does. So parts, I'll, I'll just kind of go through the, the main parts that I have modified or changed. So at the top here, we've got some spindle commands and these are commands that I've added to work with the uh, RS-485 adapter and there's also another file, uh, a custom.hal file that will also be working with the USB to, R to RS-485 adapter. So you'll see down here I've got some pins and I've got all my pin assignments here. So my X step is pin 2, my X direction is pin 3, so that, those are going to my, uh, my X driver, a stepper driver, and then same with Y and then Z and then Y2. So you'll see I've defined Y2 here and this is kind of an A axis in a way. You know you're using the the fourth axis on your parallel port or your parallel breakout board. Uh, this Y2 I believe is a variable so you'll want to make sure that whatever is labeled here is consistent throughout the entire uh, file. So I've got my outputs here and then I've got my inputs here as well. You can see my pin assignment here. Quick note on uh, limit switches. I'm using normally closed and so therefore it's looking for it to open. So it's looking, I'll have a note here, it, this minus not at the end, it's looking for it to lose signal. So if you are using normally closed, you'll want to add minus not to the end of your uh, uh, inputs uh, that is if it's not behaving the way you expect it to so moving down I have pin 15 that is my uh, touch plate so my touch plate input is on pin 15 
this next part here, um, it, it, I don't want to be talking too much here, but this will have to do with your uh, your axes here. So you can kind of see I have joint zero, one, two, and three, and you will basically instead of having axes, you have joints instead. So I have joint zero is assigned to my x, and then I have joint one assigned to my y, one, and then two is y two, and then three is z. So you will kind of think of it as joints instead of axes. At least that's how Linux CNC kind of looks at it. So this isn't totally uh, important right now. I mean, it's important, but this will mean a lot more when we get into the INI file, which we will do here in a minute. Uh, at the bottom, I have an e stop here. I'm not actually not even sure why that's there. And then at the very bottom, I have some commented out stuff for some manual tool change. So quick note, this uh, pound sign here means it's commented out. So um, this is essentially just a string of text in the text file. It doesn't mean anything for as far as executing code. So as far as the HAL file is concerned, that's kind of the uh, the end of it, I guess. Now we'll get into the .ini file, which has a little more, uh, I don't know, meat potatoes, I guess you call it. So up top here, you can give your machine a name. Don't worry about the EMC stuff. It's not really important. So display, this will be uh, related to your display interface and it is infinitely customizable uh, if you want to do it in Linux CNC you probably can it just depends how, how determined you are so you can change a lot of stuff here um, in the drop down of your steps you can change what your what your grids do so uh, intro time what your intro graphic looks like so you can have a lot of fun with this here. Um, default spindle speed is a nice one to change. Uh, this is set to 6,000 originally. It was nice to have on 10,000 because it's kind of right in between. Uh, well, it's not right in between, but it's a good starting point for uh, manually controlling the spindle if you ever need to turn it on or off. So uh, that way you're not hitting, uh, I think it's page up for uh, increased spindle speed. So the PYVCP, I talked about this in uh, the setup, and this is pointing to my custom panel.xml, and that will get into another file here. Um, and this is basically telling you, telling Linux CNC what XML file to look at for the PYVCP settings. So I think this has to do with my touch plate, my, my probe screen. I'm pretty sure I added these three here. So this probe screen I mentioned, this was the probe screen was an add-in that is not part of the default config. So that was this uh, this little tab right here. So this here is a tool sensor, and I believe this has to do with the probe screen that I just mentioned. And uh, you can kind of change different uh, parameters with the probe screen depending on what you want. So uh, same thing to do with uh, tool change down here. So uh, Python, I believe this just has to do with some configuration of the probe screen. So the probe screen was kind of a big add-on. Uh, it was there was multiple parts to it. So so now for kins, I think that's short for kinematics. The joints here, we have four joints like we saw in the how file. Remember we have joint zero, one, two, and three. 0, 1, 2, and 3. And uh, so the default was 3 because we had the setup only do 3 joints, X, Y, and Z. Well, we can easily change this to 4 to have a fourth joint. So, uh, and then for the kinematics here, coordinates, we can just add two Ys to that. So this will this will apply as joint 0, 1, 2, and 3. And so that kind of defines each each uh, each joint. So I, I left a little comment here to kind of uh, list the changes. For filter here, I don't know what that is. Uh, same with task as well. So um, parameter file that has to do with the uh, some macros that I tried to add. So I'm not sure if this is going to be too uh, too relevant. So same thing with this EMC MOT stuff here. So the HAL portion here, this is going to define your HAL files. So uh, these are already placed in your uh, config folder. So you don't have a whole lot to worry about here. Uh, same with the HAL UI. 
So I think I tried adding these later, so these might not mean much. So coordinates, we're gonna add another Y here. So I left a little comment. Uh, coordinates changed from XYZ to XYYZ, so this defines the second motor for the uh, Y axis. So, and then I also have some uh, default linear velocities in here. Uh, I'm not sure if they're accurate or relevant. You can change it to whatever you'd like, so. So the tool table here, this is using tool.tbl. I believe that's in your config folder here. Yeah, so you, if you wanna get fancy, you can have uh, tool tables. And then uh, I'm not sure how useful it is. It's probably useful, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna personally use it. So, but that's what that's referring to. So now we get into our joints. And so this is defining all the parameters for your X, your Y, and your Z. So for your X axis, you can put in your max velocity acceleration, and then you can also put in your software limits here. So you'll have a min limit and a max limit. And so the nice part about that is it's, it's a software limit for your entire machine. So you can tell the machine, hey, I don't want you to ever move more than 900 millimeters in the X direction. So as long as you don't skip any steps, it will prevent you from, from going past that. So then we'll get into our joints here. So type linear, uh, but it'll you can basically go through and set your limits here. So you can set your min limit, your max limit, your velocity acceleration, all that stuff. Um, here's our scale number. Remember that number from our config file? So uh, that turned out to be 80. So uh, if you ever want something to go in the opposite direction, all you have to do is put a minus sign. So let's say my X motor is on the other side of the machine. I would just come in here and put a minus sign here. So my, actually my Y motors ha are that way. It just kind of depends on how you have it wired up. So you can easily change that in uh, software here. So if you want to wire everything up the same, change it in software, you can do that. So now we have our, uh, our setup here. And when you first get your machine running, you're probably going to be tweaking these values quite a bit, uh, depending if you need to flip your scale or if you got your scale wrong or if you need to make the move, move the machine faster or slower, you know, that kind of thing. So um, these four lines here, at the bottom, you can add these four lines in and then comment these four lines out. So you'll basically do this right here. And then this will make it so you don't have to home that axis when Linux CNC opens. So if you're getting your machine built and you just wanna do some troubleshooting, set up your configuration like this and then you won't need to home every axis uh, before moving any axes or you know, before any motors move. So that's why I left that in there for kind of troubleshooting purposes. I have a comment there as well to kind of explain that a little further. And then the same is gonna be true for Y. So I'm not really gonna go over the, uh, the, further, the other axes here. Uh, one thing I do wanna mention though is our homing sequence. So you will see here that we have a home sequence um, uh, line here. So your home sequence you can you can define like when you hit home what's going to happen first so the way i have it set up here is my z axis is going to home first that's zero and then my x and y home at the same time so those are going to be uh, so my x axis is one and then my y axis is negative one and i'm pretty sure the negative one means that they are jointed together and but but they'll home individually so we're going to home the x and the y at the same time but since the y motors have a negative one they're going to home independently so i'm 90 percent sure that's what the negative means so now those are your two main uh files so if you just want to get the machine up and moving those are your two files however for quality of life stuff your touch plate, um, the VFD graphic, and all that, that is added separately. So uh, to get the VFD working, you go, you make a custom.hal file here, and this will be included in the, in the config folder. So this is basically gonna be everything you need to get the RS-485 adapter talking to the, um, the VFD. So 
Um, I can't explain all this. Like I said, I don't know what every line of code means. I did have to comment this one out here. Uh, I forget why. We're not using out A or something like that. All right, guys. So I got the how file, got the ini file, and that's kind of your bread and butter for your control here. I also mentioned that custom.how file. So that is as far as I'm going to take the discussion for uh, my configuration here. So to be honest with you guys, there's just way too many things that I've done and I honestly don't think I could repeat it. So I have the probe screen set up, I have the VFD uh, page set up, and then I thought there was one more thing. But those are the two biggest ones that I wanted to get working. So I am going to share my configuration folder and then let you guys kind of uh, go through it and pick out whatever you want. And if you want to just use my config folder and then put your machine parameters in, you can. Um, or if you want to just kind of take bits and pieces. So uh, please make a backup of your config folder before you replace it with anything. Um, just a reminder. So I will leave it at that. I hope that I didn't kind of uh, cut you guys short, but this uh, probe screen is something that I had a lot of help with. Uh, same thing with the uh, VFD panel. So uh, a lot of users in Discord that have helped out quite a bit, Linux CNC forums. So I don't think I could explain it again. So, <laughs> so that's going to be it, guys. I know that this was kind of a uh, boring talk through video, but I had a lot, a lot of people ask for kind of a, a deeper dive into this stuff. So I wanted to do something, something like this. So uh, feel free to subscribe if you guys want, and we will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.